explosion proof Haslock equipment. We're going to take a look at some of the features that make up a standard beefy battleship division style explosion proof enclosure. So let's take a look at this bad boy. This is a monster of a piece of equipment and this is just a light switch. Now we can tell it's explosion proof because it is thick and heavy. You'll notice there is a beautiful machine surface here and really it is extremely important that this is maintained in a almost perfect manufacture finish. This has been used for demos and because of that, it's not nearly as good any longer. Now the purpose of having such an incredible uh, flat machined surface is so that it mates with its housing. And there's the housing here and notice how wide it is. And that's because if there's an explosion inside this, we want to ensure that the gas or the products of combustion are able to escape, but they only escape through a tiny thin slit between those two. And when it does, it will cool sufficiently. Now you can see it's pretty basic technology. This is simply a heavy duty light switch. That's all it is. And we're not preventing gas from getting to it or anything. Uh, we're assuming there's going to be an explosion inside this housing at some point. There are four quarter inch bolts there and the quarter inch bolts need to be tightened and they also need to be torqued. If they're not torqued to the right rating, then we could, uh, the, the system might not be explosion proof. Now in different industries, there are lots of other trades that work along with the electrical. So in places like mining, often what they had when equipment started to become quite prolific down there is the stealing or thieving of bolts. And the bolts would be taken out of an explosion proof piece of electrical gear because the machinist needed it for something else, a conveyor system or perhaps uh, one of the uh, machines that was doing the digging. And this became a real problem because as a layman, so a non-electrician looking at this, you'd say four bolts, that's ridiculous. You only need like two, put two at the top and then it'd be fine. And some of the larger boxes have like a dozen bolts all the way around. And so what they started doing for mining applications is they designed equipment to a different standard. And what they had was instead of just open bolts like this, that you could easily put any wrench onto, they built up the enclosure around the bolt and they made them a special Allen bolt or a triangular bolt that you had to insert the tool inside the bolt like an Allen key. And uh, then only the electrician had the right wrench and it prevented those bolts from getting thieved. Now, there are lots of other types of explosion proof housings. This is a uh, two gang switch box or receptacle box. Again, everything is threaded. And so the threaded rigid metal conduit would come in the top or the bottom. If you have an unused opening, you have to put a plug into it. It doesn't necessarily have to be a seal, but you definitely need a plug. Now, there are other types of equipment that are utilized for explosion proof. And that would be something like this. This would actually fix on top of one side of that gangable enclosure I just showed. This is a receptacle and plug assembly. And it's a little bit unique because it's got a spring loaded cap here. And in order for us to use this, we have to insert it first. And then we have to push it all the way in and twist it. And once that's been twisted, then the cord would be energized that's coming out from the end of the plug. In order to turn it off, you have to twist and remove. So it's almost like a locking receptacle. Well, it is a locking receptacle, but it uh, determines when the plug is energized. That's a little bit different than a standard locking receptacle. You'll also notice some of the markings on here. Uh, this is some of the uh, classic equipment that we see for use in a lot of different areas. It's division style equipment, which is still utilized within the electrical industry. And uh, if I just do the focus here a little bit, you see it a little bit better. It says class one, group C and D, and then it says class two, group G, and then coal dust, class three. So it's listing all the different areas that it's permitted to be used. And we can use table 18 at the back of the code book in order to determine what zones would this make the most sense for.